Hey there, Eli coming at you from OSA Coventry today to talk a little bit about aquarium live foods. Today I have beside me one of the stereotypical live foods for both fresh and saltwater aquariums, and that is Artemia or brine shrimp. So for those of you who were fortunate enough as kids to have sea monkeys, you might recognize these critters behind me as sea monkeys. These are officially known as brine shrimp, but they are very close relatives to the sea monkeys that we grew up to know and love as kids. Something that a lot of us were familiar with buying this kit and hatching these from small eggs and watching them grow in this small glass vase on the counter. But those are truly a type of what we call brine shrimp in the aquarium hobby or artemia as they are scientifically known. Although the sea monkeys are engineered or bred to be a little bit more tolerant to that setting in those glass jars that they sold them with, they are truly another type of these brine shrimp you see behind me, which happen to be one of the most valuable live food options for not only aquarium fishes, but aquacultured fish in general. It's not very often that we have live brine shrimp in the shop, but brine shrimp are something that a lot of aquarists feed as frozen options or freeze dried options to a lot of different fishes. They are a very protein rich food that is something that people will feed to both freshwater and saltwater aquarium critters. But as a live food, these are one of the most important offerings for a lot of aquaculture purposes. Brine shrimp or Artemia, as they are scientifically known as, are a small species of invertebrate. They are a type of fairy shrimp that come from very salty areas, hence the name brine shrimp. A lot of times these are coming from salt lakes on the western coast of the United States where the salinities are going to be much stronger than even the full oceanic strike salinities, which is kind of an interesting thing about these animals. And what's cool about Artemia or brine shrimp in the wild is that they come from these salt lakes that might experience really high fluctuations in both salinity and water level. And they have a few different means of reproduction that allow for them to kind of work around this rainy and dry season in the wild. So. Brine shrimp are capable of breeding entirely under the water. There are strict male and strict female brine shrimp, and they are capable of laying and hatching eggs fully aquatic and fully submerged in the water. But in addition to that, brine shrimp also will lay eggs known as cysts, which are very hardy, and they are able to withstand not only those changes in salinity, but they're actually able to be completely desiccated. They are going to be something that brine shrimp will usually lay near the shore. And as the dry season approaches, if these eggs don't hatch in time, they're actually entirely drought tolerant and can live in the substrate for even a few years outside of water before they are rehydrated within just a few days time, which is just a really interesting thing about these animals proves that they're something that is very hardy, very tolerant of the conditions in which they live. And it's just a really interesting thing about them. So for a lot of people that have hatched their own brine shrimp, you might be familiar with dealing with brine shrimp cysts. Oftentimes these are something that you can buy refrigerated or frozen. And they're honestly very simple and easy to hatch. Generally, as long as you offer a little bit of aeration, some light and heat, and some salty water, these guys will hatch within about a 24 hour period was a very good success rate from those dry cysts. So that makes these guys a really interesting and a really guaranteed option as a live feed for aquarium fishes. And the brine shrimp as juveniles hatch at a small enough size that they are palatable to a lot of animals. So for a lot of freshwater cichlid breeders, especially like micro cichlids, things like ram cichlids, epistogrammas, and some of these other smaller fishes that come out developed enough to eat a larger particle, baby brine shrimp freshly hatched are a really good option to get these animals eating right off the bat. The brine shrimp that you see behind me here are almost all fully grown adults. So they are a lot larger than they hatch at a small size, but the newly hatched baby brine shrimp are usually very nutritional. They have a very high fat content, which is part of what helps them to live so long desiccated in those cysts but they are a very good option to get some of your newborn fish to eat very quickly and to bulk them up in a fast manner. Adult brine shrimp are something that are a good offering for a lot of your finicky fish as well, especially when we're talking about some of your finicky saltwater aquarium fish, things like pipefish and seahorses, oftentimes really prefer to have a prey item that is on the move. So offering live brine shrimp to some of these more finicky animals, especially when one is new to your aquarium, is a good way to make sure that they are eating well and a good source of enrichment to allow this animal to kind of express its wild hunting behaviors in the aquarium. On their own, brine shrimp are not always the most nutritious option as adults. However, they can be enriched with some of your types of phytoplankton. So adding live phyto 
to the brine shrimp culture before feeding them out is a great way to promote the fatty acid profile of these animals before offering them as food. And then some of your other options such as Selcon or Vitachem are something that can be added to this culture before feeding them off to offer some sort of vitamin and lipid enrichment to these animals before offering them as food. All in all though, brine shrimp are generally a really palatable option for a lot of your fish, something that's easily digestible and something that's almost irresistible to a lot of your carnivorous fish species. As a frozen option as well, these do tend to be a decent staple diet or something that you can kind of mix into your existing feeding regime. And especially if you're trying to feed things such as tangs or some of your cichlids or some other fish that appreciate a good amount of algae in their diet, offering a spirulina brine mix of frozen food is a really good option to make sure that you are getting both protein and some of those veggies that your fish need to grow up big and strong. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you learned a little bit of interesting facts about these beautiful brine shrimp behind me. They are not only a really fun animal to watch as they are spinning around in this jar, but they are a very valuable aquarium food option for a lot of fishes in the hobby. And without something as easy to hatch and as easy to farm as brine shrimp as live foods, a lot of the aquarium fish that we know and love today would be so much harder to breed. So thank you, Brine Shrimp, for that. As always, if you all have questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, keep it sea monkey.